Hi everyone and welcome to this Fusion 360 webinar. Today we're going to be demonstrating why hole recognition is a reason to upgrade to the machining extension. Okay, so this is what the agenda looks like for this session. Firstly, we'll go over who I am and what I specialize in. Next, we'll look at why extensions exist at a high level. Then we'll look deeper into why the machining extension exists and specifically the core offering versus the machining extension. After that, we'll go even deeper and look at hole recognition and why that alone is a single reason to upgrade to the machining extension. We'll then summarize everything we've been over. And then finally, we'll look at how you can get access to this technology in the form of a free trial. So who am I then? So of course you can see that my name is Dylan Smith. I completed what we call in the UK an apprenticeship where you learn on the job alongside with getting your education. So in my apprenticeship, I did uh, CNC programming, operating, setting, all of the different aspects of machining to learn how to program the machine and also run it. I spent seven to eight years, including the apprenticeship time, machining all different kinds of components, such as molds, dyes, generative design parts, 3D, 2D, pretty much a bit of everything in all kinds of materials, predominantly on CNC machines. In early 2020, I became a team leader in the Autodesk Birmingham Technology Center. And shortly after that, I started my current job as a customer advocacy manager for manufacturing in early 2021. So now I work with customers to find solutions to pain points within software and get them resolved via education or via software change. And also working with and helping customers to ultimately increase their productivity and experience within Fusion 360. So extensions, then why do they exist? So firstly, extending our platform. We want to eliminate disconnected tools by extending our workflows with specialized technologies in one platform, opposed to having several, which is more costly and has a much steeper learning curve. Simplifying our manufacturing processes to improve operational efficiency with automated and optimized workflows across teams to increase manufacturing throughput and reduce time to market. And finally, making innovation easier. We want to increase innovation with access to new capabilities that remove non-value added processes and enhance collaboration for easier development of smart products. So more specifically than why the machining extension. So we want to simplify and automate your workflows. We want to make use of different technologies within the machining extension to reduce your programming time, reduce errors, and ultimately make better components. Number two is to reduce cycle time, making use of powerful technology to reduce cycle times to improve efficiency. And finally, of course, produce better parts. Our advanced strategies allow our customers to reach the full potential by offering the tools that are needed. Better surface finish plus less, line, less manual finishing equals better components. Remember everyone, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to type in the chat. We have Kieran monitoring the chat and he'll try and get to anything bef before the end. So this is the core versus machining extension offering. And of course we have a lot of powerful tools within the core offering of Fusion 360. We have the two and a half, three axis milling, three plus one, three plus two, some four and five axis manual drilling and some basic probing. But in the machining extension, that's where our more powerful tools are, which cater towards more complex geometry and really do have the time saving effect. So more, com more, more comprehensive three axis strategies such as steep and shallow, more advanced multi-axis such as automatic collision avoidance, more automated drilling, which is what we're gonna be looking at today, more advanced inspection capabilities, and of course, tool path modifications. So as you all know, we are going to be looking at hole recognition, saying why that alone is a reason to upgrade to the machining extension. So firstly, before we get into Fusion 360, we're gonna do a quick demonstration, but what is hole recognition first? So it's an automation tool that intelligently analyzes your model and finds hole signatures. When we talk about hole signatures, we are referring to the different hole types that make up a hole, a hole part or a hole, a hole part, such as, so to say. So if we imagine a counterboard hole, it's made up of a bigger hole, which is connected to a small hole, we would define that as a hole signature. 
and then use templates to use appropriate drilling operations to create that hole signature in three and or five axis. So let's jump into Fusion to do a quick demonstration. So here we have a model and we have a variety of different holes on this model. So we have some M6 tapped holes, which are pretty common, three different places. We have some counterboard holes, so clearance for a six mil cap head alongside six millimeter reamed holes. We have a counterboard reamed hole, which is quite a unique hole. And we also have just a standard 12 millimeter reamed hole. So let's think about the problems that we might may face here. So due to having hundreds of holes on this model, this means that we have to make hundreds of manual selections. We have to select all the different aspects of that hole. So if it's out of order, we have to make many selections just to create that one hole. So this is where hole recognition comes in. And it really offers us a much automated way to find the hole signatures and appropriately drill to create that hole signature. So what you'll see here is that hole recognition has intelligently found every single hole which is on the three axis plane. So any hole which runs normal to the z-axis. So the way hole recognition works is it first of all finds the holes that we are trying to machine. It then gives us an action. So let's look at these holes here. These are my six millimeter reamed holes. So I want to find a template and we'll get into templates in just a second. So I want to find a template which fits the action I'm trying to achieve. So I want to ream these. So we're going to select ream. Then we have uh, clearance holes. And I'm going to show you a little trick here. We can right click and we can apply two templates to or one template to multiple selections um, without having to manually go in. Because if we have hundreds of different holes here, this can be a real time saver. Then we have a counterboard ream hole. And for, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to pretend that we don't want to machine this. So what we can do, we can ignore, because maybe a different style of manufacturing or a different style of machining suits these holes better. I don't want to encompass these within my hole recognition. Then I have the M6 tapped holes. And again, I'm going to use the, the nice little right click, and I'm going to select M6 tap. We get a slightly different option at the end here. We get a thread type. So, of course, we have imperial and metric threads, and hole recognition doesn't want to make an assumption of what type of thread you want to make. So we get that option at the back end there. So that's how the selections are made within hole recognition to apply your intent within it. So there's a couple of different bits that I just want to point out here where we can tailor it and make it more personal towards us. So we have some options down the bottom such as delete top segment, delete bottom segment, split the hole and flip hole. So occasionally Fusion 360 may get the direction of the hole wrong, and if it does, we can flip it. Let's look at, such as a counterbore here, maybe we want to, again, drill the bottom half of the counterbore in hole recognition. We want to disconnect the top of it because we want to machine that in a different method, which isn't within hole recognition. We can do that as well by splitting it or deleting it. The next tab within hole recognition is our tool libraries tab. Now it's all well and good, uh, hole recognition being aware of our intent of how we want to drill and machine these holes. But of course it needs a tool database to pull the tools from. If we, if we have a five millimeter drill, uh, which is 30 mil uh, stick out with a specific holder to avoid collisions, if hole recognition gives us a tool which we don't have, that's no good to us because we can't validate it and bring it on our machine. So within tool libraries, we make the appropriate selections of where we want our tools to be pulled out of. So me personally, I run uh, maybe two or three machines. And what I'll do, I'll build up the whole the tool libraries within the machines. And I will specifically pick them so I know I have that tool built up. And whole recognition is going to pull through appropriate tools. So that's the tool library section. Then we have options, and this is where it gets quite interesting. So we have firstly a multi-axis machining option. Now you may remember at the start, I specified that um, hole recognition is three and or five axis. So if we tick multi-axis machine and we go back to hole groups, you'll notice we now have more holes which have been identified. That's because of course, it's now encompassing everything within the spe specified angle, which I'll get to. Um, so let's say we have, 
a table table machine with a trunnion and we have a maximum tilt of 90 degrees we can specify that we only want to find holes within 90 degrees and this is really useful because of course our machines have limits and we want to adhere to them limits and not over exceed and only find out once we're at the machine another really cool option is fine by diameter so Typically, I won't use a drill if the hole goes above 20 millimeters. I'll typically use an end mill, or I may even use an end mill with a kind of pocket or adaptive strategy. So if you have a similar workflow where you don't have drills over a certain size, you can say the maximum diameter I want to encompass within hole recognition is 40 millimeters, and that's going to exclude everything above 40 millimeters, which is really useful. Organizing and the, the output of the operations is really important for efficiency. So here we have hundreds of holes, and of course, this may be in production part, so every second counts. So we can minimize tool changes if we want. So for instance, if we're milling, if we're machining a, a, this M6 hole here, and we're using the five millimeter drill, it makes sense for us to also machine the other five millimeter holes as well, whilst that drill still out to avoid unnecessary tool changes. And then we have used few spot drills as well. So again, I only use one spot drill, regardless of how big the hole is, up to a certain extent. So if I'm using my 10 millimeter spot drill, I want to make sure that spot drill is being used for every single hole so I don't have to load numerous spot drills into the machine and waste valuable space within the carousel. Now the result we get from hole recognition then is something like this. So we have a fully automated, uh, fully automated sequence of holes which have been machined. Um, it encompasses the spot drilling, it's the deep drilling, it's the helical milling which forms the counter bores. And again, it does the intelligent, uh, it does the intelligent thing of avoiding unnecessary tool changes. But this is only three axis. Of course, we have five axis as well, where we're going to find this, the holes on the side. So before we jump back to the PowerPoint, I want to quickly touch on something of how we got to the templates. So templates with Infusion are us manually creating operations, then saving that intent to automate workflows in the future. So here we have a spot drill, we have a deep drill, and we have a tapping cycle. Now, this is a very traditional workflow to create tapped holes. So what I do with Infusion is right-click, I store as a whole template, and then this saves my intent for future use. So I have a template library here. And you can see I've got a 12 millimeter ream template, which is a spot drill, a deep drill, and a ream. We have a blind tap. We have countable clearance, which is a spot drill, a drill, and a helical mill. You see where I'm getting at. We manually create the operations and save that intent to automate workflows in the future. Along with another variable here, which is our tool library, which we spoke about earlier, here's the tool library I had, which encompasses all the tools that I need to create these holes. Now, you may be thinking, how are the feeds and speeds set? So what we have with Infusion as well is something called cutting data, which again is us inputting our intent with Infusion to automatically use it later on. So for instance, we may always machine aluminium, so we can call this aluminium. And what we can do then, we can specify the different details, such as surface speed and feed rate. So when we create an intent, this default is used, obviously by default. So the feeds and speeds, we don't have to worry about, which is a really, really useful tool because we, again, we are implying that intent, we're saving it, and it's automating our workflows in the future. So that's what we end up with with hole recognition. We end up with a really automated way of drilling components like this, which have a multitude of different holes, different signatures, and it really does save, save a lot of time. So we jump back to the PowerPoint. Let me just recap what we've just been over. So hole recognition, and what is it? It's automated hole making cycles using tool libraries and templates. So as I've just said to you there, we're using the tool library to use our tool database because we only want a specific amount of tools, the ones that are in our machine, the ones that we have access to, and of course our templates, the way that we like to make these holes, whether that's with a spot drill, a deep drill and a, and, a, and a tap, or whether you don't need a spot drill, again, you can capture this intent and use it again later. We have three and five axis capabilities, and of course we can restrict this by angle to make sure that we're adhering to our machine limits. We have further options for more tailoring, so fine by diameter. So again, bigger holes are suited to different strategies, maybe not necessarily hole drilling or helical milling. Maybe they're suited to pocket machine or, or adaptive machine, so we want to ignore them. 
really, really useful option. Efficient ordering, so again, really important for efficiency when we run production runs to save every second we can, so to minimize tool changes is a real help. And finally, the ability for, for more efficient tooling with the use of fewer spot drills. As I said earlier, personal preference for me, I like to use one spot drill. I don't like to use many because I feel it's a waste of carousel space. So by using the few spot drills possible, it really helps me in, helps me preserve and make, make the best use of the space within that machine. So to quickly summarize what we've just been over, and I know that was very short, everyone. It is the intent of the 15 minute webinars to be, to be, to be nice and short and to the point. So we went over a quick introduction to who I was. Then we went over why extensions exist at a high level. Then more specifically, the machining extension and the core offering versus the machining extension. Then we went over whole recognition. I've just shown you a demo and why that may be for you a single reason to upgrade to the machining extension. And of course, we're summarizing and then how do we get access? So here's a call to action. And Kieran may have the link to post in the chat to, to, to this. If not, I can put it in after. Um, but I definitely encourage you to sign up for a free trial of the machining extension. Um, you can get a seven day trial. And with that link, you can definitely see the value that it may offer to your workflows, such as whole recognition, steep and shallow, and all the different offering, all the different features that we showed in the, in, in the machine extension offering. If not, pull your phone out and feel free to take your camera out, scan that, and it should redirect you to a link where again, it's gonna take you to the same page as the, as the link does. Um, so yeah, highly, highly encourage you to give, give the machine an extension to go via a free trial. And if it's not for you, it's not for you, but if it adds value, saves you time and money over the initial investment, then it's definitely worth it. Again, everyone, super quick. It's like a shotgun webinar. I appreciate the time. I would also appreciate any questions anybody has about anything. Um, so yeah. Okay, we seem to have a question. Can multiple tool libraries be selected when using whole recognition? Great question, and yes, they can. So again, we may have, well, people set up their tool libraries in, in many different ways. I like to do it on a, on a per machine basis, but you may have maybe cabinets set up full of tools. Um, so of course you can make one selection, two selections, as many selections as you like. And so yeah, the, the short answer is yes. Um, the long answer is, Definitely think about setting up your tool libraries in a more efficient way that suits you. And that's how you'll get more out of whole, rec whole recognition while using tool libraries. If anyone has any further questions, then we will hang around for, an, for a, a couple of minutes. So um, feel free to, to hang around as well if you wanna answer the, ask the question in, in a few minutes time. If not, I appreciate everyone's time. Hopefully you got some value out of that and hopefully you see that whole recognition may add value to your workflows. And with that, I want to thank everybody for the time again. Um, and I will be sticking around for a couple of more minutes. So if you've got any more questions, feel free to ask them and more layers. I'd love to hear them. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.